week's edition of Through a Lens. I'm Diane Hoskins and in today's video we'll be talking about editing as well as some of my tips and tricks that I've learned along the way. I will tell you that one of the biggest things that I've struggled with um, in photography is editing. It's really time consuming, it's you gotta focus really hard, and um, one little detail can ruin an entire picture or entire shoot for you or your client. So, um, I also will say that however um, difficult it may be and however time consuming it might um, be, it's really rewarding, rewarding in the end to see the final product of a picture. Um, it makes you feel really good to know that you love your pictures and that other people love your pictures and it's just, it's great. So I use a few apps and one of the apps I use is Tezza and this um, doesn't necessarily edit the picture um, in every detail, it edits the picture as a whole and it gives you recommendations that they think would fit your picture considering the lighting and where you're at and things like that. Um, I use this for Instagram pictures, but for my personal Instagram. Um, this has been really helpful because if I'm not, if I don't have a lot of time and I don't want to sit there and edit a whole picture from every single detail and I'm not really worried about is it going to a client, then I'll sit there and use Tessa and um, they work out, it works out pretty good. The other one I use is PS Express and this one is used more for every single detail. You are editing every single detail of your picture. Um, it's a really good app to use for um, edit, editing overlays, the heat, the eyes, tones, light, and a lot of other things. This one, I wouldn't necessarily say it's my favorite just because I don't like how the app is set up personally. However, I do use it <clears throat> for a lot of my shoots, unless I'm using Photoshop for big edits. So, um, depending on what pictures or shoots I'm doing, that depends on how or what app I use to edit. Um, because in every picture, I don't edit all the overlays or all the tones, um, depending on how much brightness there was from the sun. Um, and then I try to keep the pictures looking as natural as possible. I don't like them being too dark and I don't like them being too light because if a picture that was taken if that's dark isn't supposed to be dark, then I don't change it. So <clears throat> my biggest strength in editing is probably just, no, I messed that part up. Thank you for not listening. You're listening, aren't you? <laughs> okay, turn back around. I'm not talking to you. Fuck you. Anyways, so... I will say that my... <clears throat> I will say that my biggest strength isn't necessarily editing. It's not something that I enjoy or like to sit there and do. So, I'd say that one of my biggest strengths is just me taking pictures and having them bond with people, which is also just as important as um, editing. So before I give you some of my tips and tricks, we're going to take a short break to hear from our sponsors. Emerald South Lawn Care is a small business locally owned and operated in Rutherford County. Here is a message from the owner, Stephen Shepard. Born and raised in Tennessee, we know how important communication and standing by your word is. Give us a shot on any lawn care or landscaping needs and you won't be disappointed. You can contact Emerald South by email at emeraldsouthtn at gmail.com. Photography is a small photography business providing services in Smyrna, Laverne, Nashville, and Murfreesboro, Tennessee. It was originally focused on kids with autism and showing their worth. However, Jackie decided to branch out and work with all types of people and families, big or small. She loves to work with kids and animals too and works so hard alongside her photography junior photographer Diane Hoskins to ensure people feel safe and as welcome as possible. You can reach Jackie by email at gulluchij1889 at gmail.com. Now I'm going to give you some tips and tricks for photography that I've been able to put together. So, um, <clears throat> when it's the day of a shoot, you always want to dress comfortable and put your hair up. 
one of my biggest mistakes in the past has been wearing something that I don't feel comfortable in um, or stuff that can get stuck on something. So I don't wear cardigans. Um, I don't I don't wear loose clothing. And if I do, it's just a jacket that I'm wearing for a couple minutes over my shirt and I t quickly take it off when I'm done. Um, when I'm working with JC Photography, I actually, we have work shirts. So I wear those because um, they're not loose and they're black so it's not um, as bright if I'm taking, if I'm like in the back of someone else's picture. Um, and it's a good work to get the word out there shirt. Um, I Clothes can easily get stuck on things. Um, if you're doing shoots, if you're outside, they can get stuck on branches, um, stuff like that. So I try to wear as tight of clothing as I possibly can while also being modest and also being comfy. I always put my hair up so that it's out of my face if the wind's blowing, um, if I'm doing something where I'm on the ground, I don't want it in my face or in the, in the grass. So I try to keep it up and away and then, um... I always have more than one SD card with me. Um, when I'm traveling, I have a SD kind of compartment in my bag, and I keep a little plastic case in there, and I have at least three with me at all times um, because this is a really, they're really important. So you want to have as many as you think you possibly need. And then um, I really try to keep things organized and easily for transport and usage. So I've shown you my camera pa bag in the past and that is where I keep all of my camera stuff. And then I have a tripod um, also that I keep in my car um, and always in the back. And then, so I, um, so I try to keep everything very organized. I'm a very organized person so it really fits. Um, I always keep cloths for cleaning the lens. If someone, or a baby, or just people in general, or even I, because I know it a lot too, touch the lens. Because it's very important not to touch the lens and not see fingerprints on them because they do show up in pictures. So I try to keep cloths in my pocket and in my camera bag. If I'm walking around without my camera bag with me, then I need something there to clean the lens if I have to. Um, when not shooting, I keep the lens covered. Um, I'm very bad at this, but it's very easy to break the lens, to drop the camera, to break the lens, to hit it on something and scratch it, fingerprints, like I said. So I always keep the cover in my pocket if it's not on the camera or on the camera. Um, I'm always, another thing is to always be ready um, because you might not always know when the best opportunity for taking a picture is, especially if it's a wedding. You never want to miss the hug or the kiss or just really anything. It's very important to always be ready and I don't, if I'm at a shoot, I don't carry my camera bag with me um, because it gets in the way. And so I'll keep my camera bag, I mean my camera on my side and I'll keep it on because I also carry more than one battery with me. So I can switch out batteries if I need to but I can't miss that shot. Um, another thing is know how your camera works. It's very embarrassing to stand there shooting something and your camera be off or the settings be wrong or at the end of your shoot you're all good and you think you're good but when you go back and edit pictures the lighting's off and the camera didn't work right. That's embarrassing. Um, it's happened and it's not good because they're putting all your money in you. So um, frame your pictures good. Um, I would say eight out of eight out of ten times, it's pictures that I've seen from people who don't know what they're doing, or just like a picture on Instagram or something, not framed how it's supposed to be, um, and that's very important because you should know what you're doing. And when you go back and look at that, that's going to completely change how you think about it. Use a tripod for steady pictures. The shaking ruins pictures. The shaking of your hands, which isn't your fault, can ruin a picture for your client. So I use a tripod if I'm taking group pictures. Um, especially because I can adjust the height level, but I can't adjust my hands shaking. So 
If I'm going to be on a long shoot all day and I'm at a wedding, then I use the tripod um, for group pictures. Not necessar and necessarily not if it's just like the wedding group pictures. I do it if it's like the whole family's taking a picture together and it's like the last picture. I just do one tripod um, picture set. I use natural light, or I try to at least, because um, when you use your flash, um, it doesn't make people look as pretty as they want to look. So I use natural light as much as I can when I'm taking pictures. Um, a big thing for me that I've seen is when I go and I'm with other photographers or I'm having a shoot for my family and we're talking or we've booked these photographers, some of them can be so unfriendly. So my biggest tip is you want to be able to talk to people. And you may not have, not have any idea what they're talking about. But just try to be as friendly and as nice and cooperative. And if they want to take a picture and they have this list, this big long list of shoots they want or pictures they want, do it. Um, so one of my biggest tips for photographers when they ask me um, how I do it, I tell them you have to be able to talk to people. You have to be able to have fun with people and be able to do whatever they want you to do, especially if they're paying you for it. So when I've um, been with clients in the past, they've given me long lists of shoots that they've want for weddings. And so I tried, actually I'm pretty sure that we accomplished every, every shot they wanted. So we did every single picture that was on that list and it was a three page lift list of shoots that they, shots that they wanted for their wedding. Um, I also, when I'm shooting a wedding, I carry my shot list with me to know what I'm shooting, when I'm shooting it, how I'm shooting it, and who's going to be in it. Um, I've been with photographers in the past, or my family's had photographers in the past that don't care, or are not friendly. And so my biggest tip is just have fun and talk to them and have that conversation that they're striving for. Because if you don't connect with your photographer, then you can't make good pictures. Um, another thing that I've found very, very, very helpful is before you go and take the shoot or go and have the shoot, research where you're going. Know what's going to be there. Go out there and look at it personally, in person, before you go. With the family, with the couple, with the group of people, with the kids, with the dogs. Go and know what you're going to do. Um, know what days are busy and what days aren't. Know... If it's gonna like research the weather and make sure that the weather is good because you don't want to shoot a summer picture in rain because um, that will get canceled. So another thing that I've also said in the past is look like you're prepared. If you're not prepared, look like you're prepared. Look like you know what you're doing and have fun. Um, thank you for tuning in to this week's video of Through a Lens. You can follow Diane Beth Photography at Diane underscore dot photography. Back in two weeks um, for another video on my posing, my shot list, and I'm going to share some of the pictures that I've taken in the past.